Okay, so uh, we have to work out the structure of this compound, uh, C5H8010. And here is its, uh, its 1H NMR spectra down there. Okay, so the thing we always look at first is the carbon to hydrogen ratio here. And you can see the ratio is CNH2N. Um, so that means we've got a double bond in there. And as I've said before, they'll never give you one with, an, with a carbon-carbon double bond in it because the spectra is too complicated to interpret. So it must be a carbon-oxygen double bond that we've got in that molecule. We're pretty sure of that. Okay, so it's, you've got two oxygens in there. So let's have a think. Could it contain a carboxylic acid group? Well, we know fairly quickly here it can't because look, this proton here, that will give a PPM of about 12, a really high PPM. And there's nothing anywhere near as high on that on this spectrum. Also, there's no or there's nothing that's got an integrated value. You just have an integrated value of one. So we can't have that. Um, likewise, we know that this molecule is not going to contain an alcohol either, because again, that would give us an integrated value of one. So we can rule out all these things here. Also, let's have a look at these. Um, let's have a look at the. Um, the integrated values. Well, what have we got? We've got a, we've got a three, which is probably a CH three. We've got a two here, which is a CH two, another CH two, and another CH three. We're pretty sure about that. Um, now we've got two oxygens in there, so uh, it's quite likely we have got an ester linkage as well. That's pretty likely. It might not be an ester linkage. It could be a ketone and then you know a gap and then uh, what's this is called an ether linkage so it could be a ketone and an ether okay right let's well we've only got we've only got five carbons to think of here so right, let's just show you why it probably couldn't be I don't think it is an ether is because these hydrogens here are, are on a carbon these ones here they're on they are attached to a carbon which is next door to an oxygen and that would give a ppm of about four so we'd have to have two peaks of a ppm of about four and we haven't got two peaks we've only got one there so i don't think it is an ether so i'm pretty sure that this is going to be an ester so a little bit of trial and error we've only got five carbons to think of let's put an s let's put a let's do it in blue okay We could have something like that, couldn't we? How many have got th what, three carbons there? So we'd want, yeah, like that. Okay, so that, you know, we, and we could then we could chop this off and then stick that down there or, or you know, rearrange the carbons around here. Um, what, well, right, let's have a think, let's have a think about Let's have a look at this singlet then. Yeah, let's think about this one here. This peak here. We've got a singlet. So the carbon, and it's a CH3, isn't it? Because it's integrated value of three. So uh, it can't be next to the, it can't be next to a carbon with any hydrogens on it. So the only things I can think of it being is it could be next door to the carbonyl. Or it could be next door to an oxygen, like in the in the ester that way. Now let's think about the p. The, the, both of these would give us a singlet with an integrated value of three. Yeah, both of these would give us an integrated singlet with an integrated value of three. Let's look at the ppm here. The ppm of this one would be about two. Um, so my pen's not working. This one will give a PPM of about two because it's next door to a carbonyl, whereas this one would give a higher PPM, a PPM of about four because it's next door to that oxygen. 
Uh, and if we look at our thing, well, that's got a PPM of four, hasn't it? So, yeah. So I think we can say that's not what we've got. This is that peak there. Pretty sure of that. Right, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. And uh, then we can move on. So I think we've, we, we know that, that that's what we've got there. Rid of that as well, I think. So we have got CH3O, that's what that one is. Let's have a think about this one here, okay? Right, it's a CH3 because it's got an integrated value of three and it's got a splitting, it's a triplet. So that is probably. That is probably a CH3 next door to a CH2. Okay, we say that because uh, having these, uh, so having these two hydrogens here would split this into a triplet. Right, let's see if we can locate where that is then. So we've got a CH2. Right, now we've got two CH2s there. Which one is it gonna be? Right. This one here is quite unusual because that is split into six, that's called a sextet. And well, what, could, what could cause that? Well, it's got to be the carbon next door to it has got to have five. The n plus one rule is got to have five hydrogens. You can't have five hydrogens stuck onto one carbon. So what's happening there is right. If you have a look at these protons here, they would be split into six, wouldn't they? Because you've got this carbon on one side with three on it, and this carbon next door there with two on it. So that's five. So that's going to be split into Five plus one, it's going to be a sextet. So we know that this this signal here is a CH two like that. Right. Let's see if we can locate this CH two that's on the other side of it. Then, well, we've only got one other with an integrated value of two there, so it must be that one. And would that be a triplet? Would this be a triplet? Well, it would be, yeah, because this carbon here has got two hydrogens on it, N plus one, that would be a triplet. So I think we've got that group there. So what I wrote earlier is probably not right because you haven't got the CH3, CH2, CH2 group, a propyl group in here, have you? So I think what we need to do is chop that one off the end there shove it there okay so again tidy up a little bit so um, also let's just have a look at this one here this CH2 well we know it's that we know it's this one that's got a PPM of 2 which is characteristic of something which is next door to a carbonyl group. Okay, so I think we can say there, we've got a carbonyl group next to that. So we've got this bit, this, which has come from butanoic acid actually, isn't it? Okay, and the only other bit we've got to knit onto it is that, and then we've got our structure. Sorry if there's a bit of noise in the background, the bin men are just outside collecting the bins, okay? So let's draw the whole thing out, what we got. We're gonna have this bit. Right, 
Right, let's go through all what's, what's what then. Summarize that. Okay, do a different color, try and make it. This CH3 is that peak there. High PPM because it's next to the oxygen. Singlet because there's no uh, carbon with hydrogens on it there. This one here is this one here, and that's a triplet because it's next to a CH2. This one here, well, that's the sextet because it's in the middle of carbon one with three, one with two. So a lot of splitting there. And finally, we've got those ones uh, which are a triplet, split into a triplet, and they've got a PPM of about two because it's next door to a carbonyl compound, carbonyl group, sorry. And the name of that would be methyl butanoate. It's an ester. Which we haven't done much about esters. Yeah, we did a little bit in GCSE, but you will be doing them soon. Um, that is what we've got.